Hello, welcome. In this video, we're going to actually construct the graph of the function g of x in a different way. And in the previous attempt at this, we went through our function g of x and we looked at the horizontal transformations and we started with translations and then we went to dilations and reflections. And then we went to our vertical transformations, and then we reversed that and go with dilations and reflections. And then we can do our translations afterward. Okay, that's what we did in our last video. And that's typically true. Uh, you'll follow this order if you have something like this. We have f of um, ax plus b, or in this case, b plus ax. That usually makes sense. But you can actually do it a different way. And the question becomes, how do I reverse the order of these two here? Is it possible to set it up so I can do my dilations and reflections first for my horizontal transformations? So dilations and reflections first. Is there a way to dilate it and reflect it and then translate it to get where we want? Yes, there is. Isn't that amazing? We can reverse that. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, this is, which one do I do? How do I know? You always look at, if you remember, for the horizontal, look at the steps that you would take to solve for x, and that will tell you the order in which you translate for horizontal transformations. Look at the way in which you solve for x. Let me show you what I mean. So here's the uh, approach that shows you, let's say, f, let's call it ax plus b. In that case, your horizontal transformations, you start with um, how you solve for x. You have to subtract b first, so you would do translations first, and then you would go to dilations and reflections. So um, that's, I'll show you an example of that in a moment, but what if you had it in a different form? You factored a out. So if you factor a, you get x plus b over a. Now, in this case, to solve for x, imagine you're solving for x, what would you probably do first? You'd probably divide by whatever a is, and that is the dilation and reflection piece. So that's coming first, dilations and reflections. And then you'd probably subtract b over a, which is our translation piece. Now, the amount you're translating by is going to be different here, and that's what makes it possible, right? So in this case, you're translating by b units and then dilating by uh, 1 over a. And if it's positive or negative, you reflect it. And then over here, your, your dilation is the same, but your translation is going to be by b over a. So it's, it's different. It's changing the process. So if we look at just, just part, let's call it, I don't know, h of x, there's part of our function for g of x is f of 2x plus pi. That's part of it. So we want to look at this part of our function. And then over here, we'll rewrite it by factoring out the 2. So you can see what I'm talking about. Same thing, factor out your 2, you get x plus pi over 2, just like above, you get x plus b over a, right? So this is, on the left here, this is telling me, all right, well, I want to find out the inputs for h of x when, which equals f of 2x plus pi, when it equals, let's say, f of 0. Now, f of 0 on the cosine function, that just equals 1. So if I know the output is 1, I can figure out what input I have to put into h to get an output of 1. In other words, when does 2x plus pi equal 0? When does that happen? So you have to solve for x. And for all horizontal transformations, solving for x gives you all the guidance you need. So how would you probably solve for x here? You subtract pi on both sides. And that is your translation left by pi radians. That's why we start with translations. And then we divide by 2, and that's our scaling. And that tells you that if you plug in negative pi over 2 into, this case I called it h, that would get you the same output. And that is here's where you're seeing the translation left, translation first, and then here's your dilation. And if it were a negative number, it would also be if the coefficient of x was negative, it would also be a reflection, reflection, when it applies. Over here, though, it's the same thing mathematically. It's just um, we factored out the 2. So we can choose to stick with this form and say, well, when does this thing 
when does this equal f of 0? And that, of course, equals 1, because the cosine of 0 is 1. Well, that's the same thing as saying, when does this equal 0? When does that match up? So here you're going to solve for x. And you could distribute the two, and then you get the exact same thing as before. But let's just solve it from this step. Probably the first thing you do is divide both sides by 2. And that is the dilation part, which is also a reflection. And then you would, you would probably subtract pi over 2 on both sides. So that's the translation part. Translation. You can see that we end up at the same spot. It's just that the order in which we did it was changed. And it's all based on how we'd solve for x. So going back up here, um, if I was to say, how would you do this in a different way so you can dilate and reflect first? You would just say you would start by dilating by 1 over 2 and then translating left pi over 2 radians. And then I'll get you the exact same graph. And I'll just I'll show you real quick. So we start off with our cosine function. Let's say this is 1 and negative 1. So here is our cycle of the cosine function. Let's go to Quickly sketch that. There we go. That's f. So we want to rewrite this. So it says 1 minus f of, I'm going to switch the order and factor out, 2 plus pi over 2 radians. So we're to first do our horizontal transformations. We're going to dilate first now. So every distance is halved to the y axis here. This goes here. Right, just that. And then finally, this piece goes here. And that's the dilation piece. And then next, we want to look at the translation. We're going left pi over 2 radians. So this point is going to go here. This point is going to go here. This point here. This point here. And this point here. So now we have this function. And then we just do our vertical transformations. Uh, that's this piece of the function. So we have, with vertical, we're doing dilations and reflections first. So I see a negative 1. That's a vertical reflection, so a reflection over the x-axis. And I'll use red. So this point is going to go down here. This point stays in the axis. This point gets pushed up. This point stays, and then this point gets pushed below here. So here's our second to last piece. And then finally, it gets pushed up 1. So every single point, this point goes here, this point here, this point here, this point here and this point here. This is our final graph. Oops, badly drawn. Let's fix that. There it is. And that's the exact same function we got last time, but we dealt with it in a different way because of the way we wrote our horizontal transformations. All right, I hope that helped.